The simple concept of Roman art structures was ahead of its time. Romans discovered that arranging stones in semicircle shape produces structures that bridge between two columns. This simple technique made Rome a city of architecture and engineering. Not only that, but their construction techniques use cranes to lift stones, and the use of concrete and bricks in their structures have paved the way for innovation in urban planning and design. After 2000 years, we can still see some of those structures still standing. How this simple design managed to stand the test of time. And what is so unique about this concept that helped us make impressive dams, bridges and other structures over time. It is not surprised that the Romans were very famous for their stone arch structures. Although they were not the first civilization to use arches, they perfected this construction technique. Roman bridges were a vital part of the extensive road network that connected the far reaches of the Roman Empire. They were also important for military advancement. They allowed troops to cross rivers and other natural obstacles quickly, enabling rapid deployment of Roman forces in different regions. The significant thing about arches is that they can bridge between two columns. Nowadays we use steel beams or reinforced concrete beams to achieve the same thing. While this is quite advanced to the Romans, Romans were able to achieve this using stones that were dry stacked or sometimes using bricks and concrete. Unlike steel which is very good in tension, which means it will not fail if it was pulled from each end. Even if you apply forces on the beam, the bottom of the beam will experience tension, while the top will experience compression, which helped the beam to hold large amounts of forces before failure. The same thing cannot be said about stones because they are not good in tension. Stones are only good in compression, which means that if you press a bunch of stones together, they will hold large amounts of forces. By using wedge-shaped stones arranged in a semicircle or curved shape, you get a very strong and sturdy structure. The key to the arch stability is the force of compression. As the load pushes down on the arch, the stones or bricks in the arch compresses and pushes against each other. The compressive force is directed outward along the curve of the arch, ultimately transferring the load to the supporting structures on each end. The curved shape of the arch helps dissipate the load evenly along the curve and prevent the arch from collapsing. Simple right? Well, there is more. Arches have a diagonal force called thrust. The thrust is the resultant of two forces, the weight of the arch, which is the vertical force, and the horizontal thrust acting sideways. The thrust always pushes downward, with an angle that depends on the arch profile and weight. The flatter the arch, the more intense the horizontal thrust. On the other hand, the more steep or parabolic the arches, the higher the vertical forces. An arch remains stable when the thrust line is in the middle third of the arch section. The easiest way to measure the thrust is by using a chain, which is basically the inverted shape of an arch thrust. If you can fit the thrust line, or in this case the inverted chain, in the middle third of the arch, then you get a stable structure. But things get a little more complicated when the arch experiences uneven weights. Just as chains change shape when experiencing uneven loads or high loads, the arch needs to be shaped to accommodate the loads. When the thrust goes into the inner third of the arch, the arch will tend to burst outward. But when the thrust goes into the outer third of the arch, the arch will tend to collapse inward. The collapse will happen only when the line of thrust becomes tangent to the arch section. This is common when the arch experiences uneven loads. To get around this issue, the Romans used bigger arch sections, so they could withstand dynamic loads, which keeps the thrust within the arch. Roman arches were also preloaded to increase the compressive forces on the arch, which give it more stability. They also heavily buttress to eliminate any forces acting sideways, and transfer the load safely to the abutments or piers. While this is considered very good by Roman standards, by current standard this is kind of an overkill design. Today we know so much about arches that we can make them very thin with a few materials which perform much more efficiently than the ones built by Romans, which I will get into later in this video. Overall the simple concept helped Romans make astonishing structures. But there is another important question to ask. How did they build those structures? The Romans developed many construction techniques that allowed them to build bridges over water. They used temporary supports to construct shoring, which allowed them to build foundations underwater. They had various machines such as hammers to drive wooden columns into the ground. 
They use sand and wood to isolate their structures from water, and water wheels to pump the water out. After the construction of the foundation, they used false work to construct the arches. Arches were placed by using wooden cranes that lifted the rocks and bricks into place. At the top of the arch, there is a central stone known as the keystone. The keystone is wedge shaped and it is the final piece to be placed during construction. Keystones were critical to the Romans' arch stability because they locked all the other stones and bricks into position. The pressure from the adjoining stones forces the keystone into secure position, maintaining the arch's integrity. Nowadays, the construction of arches does not necessarily require keystones since most arch members can be constructed using reinforced concrete or even prefabricated steel members. The construction technique the Romans used was ahead of its time. In fact, we still use some of them today. Coffer Dam is a construction technique that allows us to build around a body of water by shoring. To drive piles into the ground, we use hammers. We also use shoring sheets to create an enclosed dam. The water is then pumped out using powerful pumps which allows for construction underwater. False work is a very common method for constructing slabs, which enables us to lay steel and services before pouring concrete. Finally, cranes which you can see pretty much everywhere on any construction site. And this is not everything. The Romans had concrete in their structures. Roman concrete uses a mix of lime, volcanic ash, aggregates and water, which is similar to modern concrete. They also understood the relationship between water to cement ratio and how adding water in just the right amount to the concrete mix can make concrete with high compressive strength. The Romans also used fried clay bricks to build homogeneous and stable structures that stood the test of time. Yes, the Romans were not the first who used concrete and bricks in their builds, but they were the ones who used it on a mass scale. So how do these concepts relate to modern structures? There is a lot of inspiration from Roman builds that is used today. Arches can be seen in many civil engineering applications. The easiest one to spot are in old buildings and arch windows. Arches are a dominant feature in Gothic architecture. Domes are also a series of small arches and it is analyzed just like an arch. Dams are also good examples of how strong arches are. They are basically an arch on its side. The dam uses the weight of the water to stabilize itself, which put all the components in compression. Yet the best example of modern arches are arch bridges. Arches can either be under the deck, which is similar to the Roman bridges. You also have a through arch bridge, where the deck is hanging from the arch using steel members. A good example is the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The compressive forces from the arch are transferred to the foundation, which is perpendicular to the arch which helps dissipate the forces acting sideways. However, if you connect the arch with the deck, you can get a tied arch bridge, which makes the deck act in tension while the arch in compression, balancing the forces within the bridge. Different types of arch bridges are used depending on the geography and the type of traffic and cost. For example, a deck arch bridge makes more sense when you have enough clearance to construct an arch without obstacles such as valleys, which can be a more cost-effective solution since the arch is smaller compared to a through arch bridge, which means less steel used. In other cases, a through arch or tied arch make more sense when constructing a bridge through water. We can also achieve the same thing by replacing the arches with cables. While arches act in compression, which makes them sturdy, suspension bridges use cables which act in tension, that get anchored at both ends, which in some situations can be more cost effective for longer bridges compared to arch bridges. But did you know that suspension bridges are never used as railway bridges? Instead arch bridges are used since suspension bridges can sway and experiences large amounts of deformations when large loads travels on the bridge. This is why they are used for smaller loads such as vehicles. Arch bridges are much more rigid structures, which is why they are much more favorable designs for much of the previous century, when locomotives were in heavy use. And way before then, back in the Roman days, since they can be constructed by using stones only. <laughs>